were Nazi eugenics an exception or a norm for the time period's international panorama? According to the dictionary, eugenics means the study and application of biological laws of heredity aimed at the improvement of the human species. At first, this does not sound so bad. However, throughout history, there have been several criteria on what it means to perfect the species. While it is true that many countries of different cultures have had laws forcing sterilization on the disabled, only some applied eugenics with racist motives or against the poor. And this is the type of eugenics which this video will focus on the most. Many people still think of Nazi Germany as an exception, but in many ways, it was not. The whole racist and supremacist ideological background has been continuous in Protestant Europe, from the beginning with Martin Luther, passed on to the pseudosciences defended by the Enlightenment, all the way to the Nazis, the Nazis being the darkest chapter of this history. It is true that eugenic antecedents go back to ancient Greece. For example, in Sparta, the strongest babies were selected so that they could fight as adults while killing or abandoning other babies. It is not until the second half of the 19th century that the Englishman Sir Francis Galton systemized eugenic ideas influenced by Charles Darwin's work The Origin of Species. Galton proposed eugenics as a science for the improvement of lineages in order to save society from a regression toward mediocrity. He observed that mediocre people reproduced more and society turned to the protection of the weakest, whose lineages should have become extinct as it happens with other species. However, he never referred to any concrete policy to be followed. Later, followers of Charles Darwin would continue this tendency by establishing the British Eugenics Society, the first in the world. Until the year 2021, there existed an institution that bore the name of Galton, which was changed because now they repudiate their own eugenic ideas after having defended that such ideas do not have to obscure Galton's other achievements as a scientist. It should be noted that the attempt to introduce eugenic laws in this country failed. For decades, eugenics had expanded as an acceptable science in many circles of the intellectual elite. Famous characters defended eugenics, such as Nikola Tesla and Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone who opposed marriage for the deaf. That way their offspring would not inherit this ailment. Or the famous economist Keynes, whose movement was later supported by some African Americans in the United States, but with the idea of improving their own race. As far as state policies are concerned, the United States was the country that most seriously adopted eugenic ideas beginning at the end of the 19th century. In 1896, the state of Connecticut prohibited marriage for anyone who was labeled as a textbook epileptic, imbecile, or mental weakling. In the 20th century, eugenic policies began to expand by prohibiting interracial marriages and imposing forced sterilizations on certain Hispanics, African Americans, or Native Americans, along with poor inmates, the disabled, or the mentally ill. Immigration was restricted from Asiatic territories, along with Eastern and Southern Europe, whose populations were considered inferior, etc. In order to implement these policies, eugenic societies were created in 32 states during the 1930s. In 1907, Indiana would approve the first mandatory sterilization law in history. Then another 30 states would follow suit with the approval of the U.S. Supreme Court. From 1907 to 1963, between 60 and 80,000 people were sterilized under these laws. According to surveys, these laws were very popular among the population. In the 70s, there were so many sterilizations carried out over there in so many uncontrolled ways that there are no concrete figures that encompass all of them. For example, in 1972 alone, the Southern Poverty Law Center published that they had sterilized 16,000 women and 8,000 men with federal funds. During the 1970s, 40% of indigenous women and 10% of men throughout the United States had been subjected to sterilization. Many of these cases took place with the Indian Health Services. Puerto Rico was hit the worst, given it was a poor colony. Unemployment reached 37%. The rural population became what planners called overpopulation. A third of Puerto Rican women were sterilized between 1930 and 1973, reaching the highest rate of sterilization of the world, with more than 300,000 in total. En Puerto Rico, 
In Puerto Rico, one in three women of childbearing age has been sterilized. So common is the method that it is known simply as the operation. I have a sister named Felici who was operated on. I have a cousin, Antonia, who was operated on. I have a third sister called Francisca who was operated on and all are sterilized in order to finish off the family, right? In California, the largest number of sterilizations was carried out within the U.S., more than a third of the total number. The majority of those affected were of Mexican origin. Along with these policies, the indigenous genocide should be mentioned, where rewards were offered of up to $200 per Indian killed by the U.S. government in the 19th century. In California prisons, it was registered that between 1997 and 2013, about 1,400 inmates were forced to be sterilized illegally. In recent years, cases have been detected where Hispanic immigrant women were sterilized without their consent. It has been denounced that consent forms were allegedly too complex as to easily coerce signatures from people with less resources. I worked in Lincoln Hospital for eight years, and now, particularly, sterilizations are markedly on the increase in the United States. And if we look at where they're on the increase, or on whom, I should say, they're on the increase, it's mainly minority women, that is, black, Native American, and Hispanic women. And poor whites, especially in depressed areas where there is very high unemployment. The obsession with race in the United States has even led some places to hold contests for white babies in which their physical health and intelligence were tested by doctors. Subsequently, family competitions were created in order to demonstrate their good values and ability to procreate the best children. All of this was carried out with underlying motives whose eugenic methods sought to create the best possible individuals. The United States of America had become the most eugenic country in the world. So much so that important American foundations like the Rockefeller Foundation took it upon themselves to expand eugenics by funding programs and institutions in order to implant these ideas in Nazi Germany. Paradoxically, Americans, some of them Jewish, taught eugenics to Nazi Germany and then tried them for it in the Nuremberg trials. If that's not clear enough, right here we can see how Americans boasted of having influenced Hitler's ideas. After the Holocaust, Eugenics began to have a very bad reputation, so the biologist Paul Popineau, whose report on eugenics also convinced the Nazis, discovered a more discreet way of practicing eugenics by founding the Institute of Family Relations that still exists to this day. His concerns drove him to promote healthy marriages between fit people. On many occasions, especially in the 70s, Family planning was used as a cover to sterilize single or poor mothers, many of them African American, either by making them sign a consent document that they did not understand or blackmailing them with losing their social benefits. Sometimes this happened in hospitals after they gave birth or when going to the hospital for other reasons unrelated to sterilization, like in Mississippi, or they would directly resort to categorizing them as crazy in order to legally sterilize them against their will, as it happened to many Mexican women in California. Eugenics was also funded by suffrage groups, such as the National League of Women Voters, and other associations, such as the Union of Christian Women for Temperance, in fact, within feminism, there was a movement called eugenic feminism that fought for an active role of women to improve their race. Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood, was also a part of this trend. Today, Planned Parenthood is still active in family planning and abortions, being the most dominant in the world. Canada implemented laws similar to those of the United States around the same time, the indigenous and immigrants from Eastern Europe being the biggest victims. In this article, women detail their experiences with forced sterilizations. When they consented to a C-section during labor, the doctors included tubal ligation in the consent form either minutes before or en route to the operating room. This has led to a class action lawsuit on behalf of indigenous women that launched in 2017. These sterilizations are still carried out until this day, despite seeming like a thing from the past. Sweden sterilized people until 1976 in the name of racial purification. Even though most of those who were forcibly sterilized had mental disabilities, there were many outrages. 
According to this article by The Guardian, teenagers as young as 15 years old were sterilized with their parents' consent due to trivial inadequacies such as short-sightedness or because they allegedly lacked judgment or had no obvious concepts of ethics. The Washington Post claims a young woman whose priest believed she had not learned the lessons of confirmation well enough earned her a sterilization. In 1922, the Swedish Institute for Racial Biology of Uppsala was founded, the first racial institute in history. Its first director, German Lundberg, held that the Norse people were of a superior race and any kind of miscegenation with the Sami indigenous people, the Romanians, the Jewish, the Finnish, or any other racial minorities would weaken the Scandinavian people, who he considered as the highest degree of human perfection. In 1913, Lundberg began to classify individuals with a larger skull as superior and those with smaller skulls as inferior. He believed that they not only had greater intelligence, but better moral qualities. Hypocritically, Mr. Lundberg maintained relations with a Sammy cleaner of inferior race and with whom he had a son. All this after exhaustively warning the Swedes about the dangers of these kinds of relationships. The Sami people, or those from Lapland, have constantly had their lands and resources taken from them until this day. It's safe to say the Sami people are the closest European equivalent to the Indians of the Far West. Still, in 2007, Sami organizations were demanding from the Nordic governments that they return the skeletal remains that had been used in experiments. Some of them were retrieved by exhuming bodies in cemeteries. Another country that was a pioneer in eugenics and that had influence on the Nazis was Switzerland. One of the most important ideologues of the Nazi legislation on eugenics was a Swiss, Ernst Rudin. Switzerland is far from having been that libertarian fairy tale paradise that many believe it to be. Even one of their districts prohibited the female vote until 1989. Also, Swiss banks managed thousands of Nazi accounts, and 70 Swiss companies were built from the ground up by the labor force of 11,000 forced workers from Nazi concentration camps. In Switzerland, there existed only one district with a sterilization law between 1928 and 1985. Curiously, it was the first law in Europe of this kind to be regulated and having to meet some requirements. The law managed to convert that district in the one with the least sterilizations produced. In other districts, there existed legal vacuums that increased sterilizations by coercing women to sign consent, and in not doing so, they could lose state aid. It should be noted that the Protestant areas of this country were much more prone to these practices. Where there indeed existed a Swiss national plan was in its attempt to erase its gypsy culture from the country. The Yenish were declared unworthy from 1926 to 1973 by the private but quasi-state Juventu organization. This organization was the main contributor to their removal and was considered the only one dedicated to the protection of youth at the national level. The erasure consisted of requisitioning children of this ethnic group so that they were not educated in their culture in addition to sterilization. 600 children in total were taken away and many were used as cheap labor and even abused depending on where they ended up. Contrary to popular thought, there was no eugenic plan in the Soviet Union. Stalin was the one who dissolved the Russian Society of Eugenics in 1930 as a bourgeois and fascist doctrine. Neither did Mussolini nor Franco have eugenic programs, nor did these ideas have great depth in the states of southern Europe. Generally speaking, Catholics have been opposed to eugenics and have shown large resistance in countries with these policies. Quite the opposite with Protestants, who used to support them as was the case in Sweden, where the Lutheran Church itself gave its total support. In Japan, there was also an attempt to implement eugenics with racial reasons and blood purity. But what really exploded within the country were again forced sterilizations of the mentally disabled and those with certain diseases that they believed were heredity, such as leprosy. Nevertheless, there were also some excesses, such as the case of a nine-year-old girl who was sterilized and who later demanded that the Japanese government recompensate in payments. Another eugenic initiative by the government was the prohibition of Japanese women intimately matching with Korean soldiers, 
Also, after the Second World War, the government created brothels, sacrificing some women in order to prevent American soldiers from assaulting random women, impregnating them, and thus contaminating the Japanese race. The history of Japan in this sense is quite sordid, since during its colonial era, it kidnapped tens of thousands of women to serve as slaves for Japanese soldiers and maintaining relations with them. A case related to Japan and the United States was the one of the forced sterilizations in Peru made by the Fujimori government with the financing of organizations such as the USAID Agency. For the international development of the US, the UN, and a Japanese private entity called Japanese Foundation, more than 300,000 indigenous people were sterilized in this campaign. Although reports of forced cases were minimal, it is not known whether most were totally voluntary, if a ton of propaganda was used to coerce them, if people did not want to speak out, or if people were simply unaware of the operation that was carried out. In the registry of victims of forced sterilization, only 6,800 people have been registered, vast majority being women. It's difficult to know in almost all cases that I have cited in this video how many people were forcibly sterilized, how many by brainwashing, and how many by their own volition. El Dr. Dick Ravenholt, director de la the Dr. De Dick Robin Hood, director of the Population en Office, in 1977, he claimed that the goal of the United States of America was to sterilize a quarter of the planet's women to prevent hostile revolutions toward commercial interests of multinational corporations. Millions of dollars are being invested by private foundations in studies on population control in countries such as Puerto Rico and India. Population explosion has not yet occurred, but these may be the last minutes before the bomb explodes. Another recent case from the East, although much less aggressive, is that of China that approved the law of maternal and child health care that requires women to perform a premarital examination if the doctors suspect the presence of genetic diseases of a serious nature, they are given a choice between not marrying, accepting contraceptive methods, or sterilization. Today, laws that force sterilization on the mentally disabled and transsexuals are being repealed in many countries. Until 2020, Spain had a law that allowed a judge to decide whether a person labeled as a textbook inept could be sterilized against his will. This law ran contrary to the international agreement signed in 2008, in which Spain committed to do it no more. 1,000 women were forcibly sterilized between 2008 until 2020. Many countries have or had laws like these. Argentina was the first Iberian-American country to repeal them. Currently, there are still controversial legislations that are often associated with eugenics. For example, in Holland, euthanasia extends to anyone who does not feel like living anymore because they have been abused or suffer from anxiety disorders or depressions. Babies who are seriously ill are also euthanized even when it is known that details of the medical prognosis may be completely wrong regarding their road to recovery. In Canada, there are even statistics estimating the millions saved by killing patients with euthanasia, not needing to pick up the bill for these people's medical treatments. What do you think? Are eugenics a thing of the past or still widespread today?